What is going on, my online poker players? Okay, I've got an important update to share with you guys about what playing online poker has taught me about life. And this answer might not be what you're expecting, but it's that both are very unpredictable. For example, you might have a strategy in place for how you plan on winning in a poker match and then things don't work out. And maybe you're working a job trying to save money and then you find out you're getting laid off or maybe your hours are just getting cut. You know, I think if playing poker has done anything for me personally, it's allowed me to be present in the moment and live easy each day as it is instead of trying to plan for things that may be out of my control. And when it comes to online poker, the only thing we have control over is, you know, how we're playing in any given session. We can't control the cards or what happens on the Turner River. All we can do is improve every week, learn from our mistakes, and play our best A game. And the thing about poker is that your A game is a moving target. It's always getting better. Okay, anyways, I do have another session here to go over on Ignition Poker. This was actually a bit of a rough session for me, so you'll need to watch this one till the end. Of course, if you guys are looking for a solid poker site, I would recommend Ignition. You know, the software is excellent and the players are fairly easy to beat at these mid stakes. So if you guys do want to get started on here, there will be some bonus links you could check out directly below in the description and comments. You could also get in our poker newsletter or join our community as well. Please tap that like and let's get into these hands. Okay, um, yeah, so this was a 500 no limit session. You know, uh, I'm always switching up between 200 no limit and 500 no limit's kind of where I stay. The reason I don't tend to go higher than this online because, you know, when you get to like 5, 10, and 10, 20, those games are kind of at the point of you're playing against almost professionals. So it's a little bit harder to get a good return on investment for the time you're playing. I've just found over the years that $200 cash games, $500 cash games, this is where you know, I've made the bulk of my money and it's kind of just where, where I kind of just stay because, you know, it is what it is. I'm also going to be using the uh, turquoise color as the table background for this one. And um, yeah, I, you know, th this was definitely a, a rough session for me. And, you know, part of that was I was kind of forcing it a little bit more than I should have. In the beginning here, I'm going to be playing pretty tight pretty standard poker but as we get on in this uh session you're going to see that like you know i got a little bit too aggressive in a couple spots and kind of bit me in the butt um and it is what it is guys uh sometimes when you're playing poker too it doesn't matter if it's online or live you know you got to go with your gut sometimes and make gut decisions sometimes your gut's going to be wrong but i i feel like the more you trust your gut in certain spots like whether it's just you know, poker or life in general, it's usually the right decision. And, you know, in this one, I went with my gut and uh, you'll just have to wait and see what happened. That's all I'm going to say right now. All right. But we do have some interesting hands in this. A couple of uh, tough decisions, too, in this one, I will say. We were kind of put to the test a little bit here. Okay, um, but yeah, uh, pocket eights. Okay, so we are going to deal with a raise here. I'm just going to make the call. You could argue three betting in this spot, but I decided just to make the call. And the flop was not the greatest, not the worst, okay? But there were some problems with it, you know. Now, the problem here is, let's say a turn hits on the seven, okay, and we've got a straight. We could be up against, you know, king-queen is possible in this spot, and I, I realized that the whole way through, okay. Um, not really thinking about queen eight. I'm going to throw that hand out, but uh, especially because everybody checked. So you got to figure if somebody had the straight on the flop, typically you do want to bet because look at, I mean, there's two flush cards out there. Um, and you know, you want to be betting against people who have like a pair of jacks or 10. So, you know, I'm kind of thinking here, like we got to be good right now. Right. Um, so, uh, I am going to make a call here. Now player five is going to make this hand very tricky for us. Now you got to figure we have two eights. There's only two eights left in the deck. So um, what are the odds that he has an eight? Probably pretty low. So what could he be doing this with? What I was afraid of, king, queen. Um, I mean, it just, it, that's what it, it definitely felt like right here. But let's let's see what happens. I was going to put in a huge bet on the river. This bet 
really just told me that like he's got it but how do we get away from this hand our hands too strong so you know ultimately i'm going to make a call here no way i could get away from this and if we lose it is what it is right it's just kind of like one of those really uh almost like cooler like situations i'm not putting him on a bluff here at all okay he turned over ace eight thank god i was definitely worried about that but like i said our hand was just too strong to muck right there so i had no choice but to uh to make a call right there. Okay, uh, and on we go. Thank God we didn't lose that one, right? I definitely thought, I definitely thought it was like a 50-50 we were gonna lose that hand, but you know, fortunately, we're still chugging along here, so things are still working out. Now this session you're watching was only about 30 minutes long, so it was pretty short. We're almost going hand for hand in this. I did cut a few hands out of it um, on the upload, but you know, for the most part, you're going to see uh, the meat of this, this session. Also, uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, concerns, things like that, feel free to message me below. Um, I do want to keep letting you guys know we did launch a community. You can get some one-on-one -on -one with me if you want to do that. Or, you know, if you're looking for a place to just share hands and just go over things, you know, I'm definitely, uh, you know, uh, here to help, and uh, I think the community would be good for a lot of you out there who may be trying to take this game a little bit more seriously. Okay, here we go, man. All right, so now we're going to be heads up against this guy. Now check this out, right? Um, not a good flop. <clears throat> turn card, though, uh, well, we still have two overs to this board, right? Um, turn card is going to be a little bit of a spicy one because it's going to do a couple things for us. Don't want to give it away. Now, I ended up making a good play in this. I will say that. Okay, turn card was pretty darn good all right so now we have a uh up and down straight draw queen or a seven would give us what we need now i put in a small bet just to kind of see where this guy was at thinking that he's probably going to make a call here if he has a pair maybe he um maybe he just folds but what i didn't expect here is he's gonna raise us to like a ridiculous amount um and you have to figure, you have to look at like what's in the pot. I think he's going to raise it to like $85 or something like that. This was like, like really? Like, <clears throat> and for us, this is a really hard hand to get away from because we still have, uh, you have to figure we're blocking the flush because we have the 10 of hearts. So is he trying to bluff us on a flush draw? Probably not. So what's he representing here? Um, two pair, I guess. That's possible. I mean, maybe two pair. That that's what it seems like it could be. I don't think he's doing this with like a, a you know, a flush draw. Um, but I had to think about this, and you know, ultimately, uh, the price was not right for us to chase this. So, I am gonna let it go after thinking about it for a minute because this is a tough one, and we are gonna get to see a river card here. So we'll see if we made the right fold. And here it is. Bada bing, bada boom, and yeah, thank God. All right, so. We made a good fold right there. It was just he priced us out of that hand, and it just didn't it didn't make sense to. Uh, I mean, I wanted to make a call, but you know, like I said, we had to see the river card there on the rabbit cam, and um, yeah, it turned out to be a good fold. All right, now me and him are going to go at it for a little bit, but there is going to be one hand coming up here where things kind of, you know, were the turning point for this session. And the thing about playing heads up online poker, guys, it's it's a it's something I don't recommend doing as much. The problem is, you know, you can't see the other player. You can't really see how they're acting. And you're kind of just going with almost like a GTO type of style heads up online. And I don't like that. So typically, I don't play a lot of heads up online cash games. I just don't do it. I prefer the six table. Or even I would do, I'd prefer a full table over it too than playing heads up. But we were kind of just like back and forth. And, you know, we're going to see, we're basically going to, like, lose the little bit of profit we had in this session, kind of go back down to 500 bucks, so, like, back down to even, which is fine. I mean, it's very it's very normal to be playing for, like, an hour or so, and you're break even, or you're up a little bit, or you're down a little bit. That's all That's all pretty standard, right? It's not a big deal. But, um, but yeah, we, we do have a, uh, 
we have a big hand coming up here, so get ready for it. And yeah, I mean, I was folding a lot here, but I mean, look at our cards. What are we going to do here? I mean, it's like three bet with garbage. Can't really do that. All right, tried to, to limp in this one. And he is going to just push us out of this hand again. I mean, we can't really continue with this either. So almost a little bit card dead, I guess you could say, for a little bit here up against this guy. And I think that's kind of what forced me to put more action when we finally did have a decent hand, I guess. You know? Okay, queen jack, nothing there. Okay, so here we go. We finally made it to the hand of this session. All right. Um and it's not like a big hand by any means. It's just an a6 offsuit. Now, heads up, any ace is going to be playable. It doesn't really matter what it is. Um, and, you know, going to put in a raise here. I think he, I don't think he three bet this. Let's see if he just made the call. You, you guys also have to understand, I was definitely getting a little bit tired of this guy. Just sort of um, almost like pushing us around, which is why I'm going to make a stand on this hand. Like, that's what I was thinking too. It's like you know what, I've had enough of this, like, and it, this is a gut decision that I made on this hand, it was just a gut play, so, you know, like I said, sometimes you gotta go with your gut, it's gonna be right a lot of the time, other times it might not be, but it is what it is, oh yeah, he put in a really big three bet, okay, and yeah, I'm I'm not going anywhere, Oh, and this was not a terrible flop because we are going to hit a pair. Um, he three bets, so what could he be three betting with? He, I mean, over pairs, possible. You still have your ace kings, your ace queen type of hands, your ace jacks. So all those are in the realm of possibilities. He's going to put in a small bet, like a feeler bet, into this hand. And this is where I made my stand. Okay, I said, you know what? I'm going to make a play here. Which, which is what I did. With just a pair of sixes, okay? Just tired of this guy. Thirty-three bucks into this, it just felt so it just felt like uh, like a continuation, but I've, I have nothing, right? That's that's what it felt like. So that's why I made this play once again. I'm just going to come over the top. Now, let's see how long he thought about making this call because he is going to make the call. Um, and I was actually kind of shocked by what he has. I think you guys are going to be shocked too. Remember, he three bet to 50 bucks preflop on us. And we made a call with a six. And the moment is upon us. So here we go. Giddy up. Now, this is basically for this whole guy's stack, too. You guys got to remember that. I mean, <laughs> the whole stack. All right, so he did put a little bit of thought in this before making the call. Okay, here we go. Queen 10. All right, so he did have... Um, Let's look at this. We, he did have a, a possibility of like runner, runner if he hit the uh, the clubs. But, you know, we're basically looking at an ace or six here on the river. And we did not get there. So we took a huge loss for the day. Um, but that was a gut instinct, guys. I was tired of getting pushed around by him. Didn't work out. I don't regret the play and running it back for you. Um, I still hope you guys enjoyed this session, right? So not the greatest one I've ever put in. But like I said, you know, life, poker, all of it, you know, you got to 
you, you take the wins, you take the losses, you move on, you improve, you get better, and uh, tomorrow's always another day. Okay, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, like I said, uh, Ignition, if you want to get started on here, definitely recommend them. Currently, one of my top sites I play on. You can also join our community newsletter. We'll have those links below in the description and comments. If you made it to the end, please tap that like, and we'll see you all in the next poker video.